Hi everybody, and here we are. This is part five of my Geschutz wagon, and this will be my final update before the final reveal. But got the paint on, and she's all pretty much built. So here it is, the Geschutz wagon. Still got to glue in some of my uh, bits and bobs on the inside. I just sort of loosely placed them, so I'm going to be a little careful with my movement of the tank. But here she is. Yeah, worked on that for a couple hours last night and uh, had a lot of fun. So, why don't we uh, take a slideshow of what it looks like? I know my camera is awful, so um, let's take a few moments to look at some pics. Well, those are a lot better, a little closer, a little cleaner, and uh, certainly shows the uh, development. So uh, what happened? Last update, I was waiting for my tracks to dry. So it took a while, but they, they dried up, and I just put them on. They were real, you know, there was no problems, no hitches. Uh, I just had to make sure I painted my steel rods uh, a rust color. And that worked out okay. I can barely see them. Um, very, very little notice. I, I can't. I mean, there's one I see there. If you look really hard, you can find them. But once, with weather and pigments and, and other things, it'll be fine. So that's always the thing with that style of uh, track. Um, sag technique. Just make sure those pins are really small, smaller than the actual cleat of the track. That way um, they stay hidden very well. Okay. Um, yeah. And what, what else happened? Um, there was a little bit of the uh, a tug of war wrestling match because once the tracks were on I had to put on the superstructure, which I was glad that was done and over with. I had to, no more tricks to click in. Glued it in certain particular points. <clears throat> and then the rest came down to just uh, putting on the gun mount, getting that nice and secure, waited for that to dry. I let that thing dry for 24 hours before I continued. And the big challenge though was this uh, exterior gun shield. I had to make sure that that was in the right place because uh, the gun itself, the actual trumpeter kit, it doesn't allow for the elevation of the gun. It, it's in a fixed position and she ain't going anywhere. So I had to make sure it was just right. So um, use some uh, closed pins to clip it on to the actual superstructure and again let that thing dry for a while, about 24 hours. And once that was on, everything else was a cinch. Um, I, there was concern over the actual gun, because all of this mechanism, the breech, and the barrel, and all this, these are all separate pieces. And I was just concerned that uh, all the symmetry would get lost, that nothing would be aligned. And um, it's okay. The only place where it's pretty noticeable a little bit is the, the muzzle brake does, it, it goes off a little bit like that. It's not much. I, I didn't really notice it until it was already too late. Um, but that's okay. It's just a model kit and it's all about the fun, which is true. It's not just a hyperbole, but it is really about the fun of the build. Um, I made sure that the muzzle brake, because I had a nice because uh, it was a separate piece. I had to fill it, use milliput, stuck a whole wad of that in there, and then packed it in, and then I finished it off with some Tamiya putty, sanded it smooth, and that's, that's pretty good. For a stock barrel with a lot of issues, I'm not going to complain about it at all. Yeah, good stuff. Now, the silly putty method. What is that? Um, actually, it was a first 
in a few years. I've used it in a lot of 172 kits, but I never used it on a 135th, and I just sort of winged it. Um, I used a cookie sheet, metal cookie sheet for cooking, and then um, used my wooden spoon end, and I used it as a, a roller. And I rolled out my silly putty really thin, and I just took my X-Acto blade and I cut out patterns that were kind of circular. I based my camouflage pattern on the, uh, there was a graphic design on the side of the box cover, so I used that. I liked it. And for the most part, it worked out pretty well. Um, I initially started out with a red-brown color first, so I spray painted all the way around and then I slapped on my first initial putty and um, that came out pretty good and then there's a there is a it's not no it is mathematical you want to have it so, so it went red brown green yellow and going all the way around and I just had to make sure that I had enough patches so that I wasn't off on a number. I know there's a thousand flavors of this, but there is a, a, a technique so that it looks okay, I guess, but I'm not going to get into the historical accuracy thing. That's just nonsense. Um, so yeah, red-brown, put it on, and then I sprayed my green and then I took the silly putty and instead what I did though, um, because you can notice it borders, they border each other, the red brown and the green. So then I just slid my silly putty right over a little bit onto the red brown. Put that on. And then I went on with all my my yellow. Dark yellow. Now I don't know if you noticed, I don't know if the, the camera will show up, but it's very bright where I painted in comparison to the chassis and the interior. That's because this has no wash, no anything on it. It's just uh, brand new paint right on. So it's pretty bright. But once weathering techniques go on, washes, it's going to bring that color back. So it should mesh pretty well with the chassis. Um, the masking system, I did have to mask the chassis because if you noticed I had painted all this earlier. So I just used newspaper, newsprint, and I just shoved it in and around the uh, the chassis track system. And then I used some putty on the inside so I wouldn't get any paint on the tracks. And that worked out pretty good. I'm not complaining. So now at this point, where am I? I want to take like a nice 3,000, 4,000 grit sandpaper. I do have a little bit of edging on the paint. I'm just going to smooth it down just a little bit and once that's on I can get the decals ready and then from there I'm going to use a dot oil filter on these, these panels. These panels are beautiful. They just scream a nice filter and that's going to really <clears throat> blend in those those camouflage patches really well. They're going to it's going to break up a little bit of that edge work and just sort of blend the whole thing right in. Um, so I'm looking forward to that project. And then from there, it's just um, I'll probably throw in some pastel chalks. I still got to work on some more steel on my tracks on the bottom. Uh, my chipping, color pencils. You know, typical weathering techniques. I have to glue. I haven't glued my gadgets in yet. So I gotta make sure those are done. My antenna. It did come with an MG34. Um, I'm probably just gonna leave it off. Uh, those things always break. Yeah, I go to you go to model shows and yeah, some people they they just broke. I mean, every model show there's probably two or three fellows who you know the wind catches their model out of the box and it lands into the parking lot. It's sad, but it's true, and um, so I don't want to break it. I'll just, it's just not on. So, there it is. I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really it. There's really not much to say. I, um, 
the model kit overall uh, was okay. I think somebody mentioned in one of the commentaries, somebody would have pitched this in the trash long ago, but I stuck with it, and I always say stay with the model, because even if it is, doesn't come out that great, you're still going to learn some things about yourself and your model building styles and the kit. So I'm happy that I stuck through it, not that I ever, well there may have been, I think episode 2 I mentioned, I think there was a moment of, of panic, what have I gotten myself into, but once I got through with interpreting the instructions and rewriting them, everything was better. So it was still a good kit, and I'm very thankful for the gift, because again this was a gift, so uh, thank you Andy for the sweepstakes that you had or the free giveaway, and Norm Lejoie for, uh, who actually won it and, and sent it to me instead. So you guys are great, very inspirational model builders, and like many of you, offer so much to the model building hobby. Okay. My only thing though, darn it, I wish they could have elevated the gun. The gun's a fixed position, doesn't move. And the periscope, I suppose I could have cut it, but um, it only looks out obliquely. The actual real thing must have been on a swivel, so that you can look out straight. Um, but, oh well. Things you can do for next time. Alright, so I'm going to end it with a slideshow of different picks that I took over um, the course of episode 6. Or was it? Episode 5, episode 6, that will be the final reveal. Well, thanks for watching. Thank you for all the support that I've gotten for this build. This is my longest running episode build on my channel, which is kind of cool. And my first trumpeter kit. So I'm very humbled by the experience. I'm very humbled by the amount of um, comments and support from the, the community here on YouTube. It's uh, very nice. So I'll see you guys again here on YouTube. You guys model on and have fun. Goodbye.